Killing Detroit by Christopher Hood and David Copper Feature Film Killing Detroit, A True Story A true story look at the life of Detroit native Chris as he navigates the riots and drug influx of the 1960s and 70s. He attempts to set up an education center to educate blacks in his community. Detroit, David 1967 Copper. After a string of racially motivated police killings, Copper. the nation's largest race riots break out on Detroit streets. During the riots, the police and the National Guard murder over 70 black people, including young children. The riots end, but protests continue. Chris meets a man named Al. Al hands Chris a card for the Black People's Topographical Research, TOP, in Chicago. Next, Chris talks to his friend Glenn on a bus headed to Operation Breadbasket in Chicago. Chris tells Glenn about Top. Glenn is skeptical, noting that Chris knows nothing about Al or his group. They skip the breadbasket meeting. When they arrive at the center, they are blown away with the class conducted at the center. After the Chicago meeting, Chris and Glenn speak to Al about setting up a Top Center in Detroit. Following this, Chris and Glenn establish the Detroit Center. They open a bookstore with a large classroom in the rear just like Chicago. The back of the store is used for top classes and meetings. The group starts to conduct classes, exposing the Detroit Police Department as Detroit's largest drug dealer. This exposure triggers an attack on the group from J. Edgar Hoover and the federal government. The group is considered dangerous and radical. A few months after the center opens, Chris enters a raffle. He holds the winning ticket for a rifle. On the way home with the rifle in his trunk, Chris is pulled over by Detroit police who find the rifle in his trunk. Despite an unjust sham trial with cops being untruthful, Chris narrowly escapes death and jail after having a gun placed in his mouth by one of the police officers. Afterwards, Chris's brother Mike becomes a victim of a heroin overdose from the same police-fueled drug influx he is fighting against. The death supercharges his efforts to get the word out about the Detroit PD. As the group becomes a target and threat, the group's national headquarters is attacked in Chicago. The attack ends up killing five of its members and close friends of Chris. Two members of the Detroit Center retaliate by stabbing and killing a white college student on the campus of Michigan State University. The two killers escape justice for 32 years. They are brought to justice by use of FBI cold case funds. In a strange twist, one killer has built a real estate empire, becoming a multi-millionaire. The other ends up homeless. Each is found guilty in a high-profile trial in the county where the murder took place.